How's it going, everybody? Mike back at you with another edition of Five Minute Gaming. Often I talk about how I have fond, fond memories of this game and that game and this game, fond memories all around. Well, this is a game I don't have fond memories of, and that is Pac Man. But it's not Pac Man for the arcades, it's Pac Man for the Atari, or the Atari 2600 to be exact. It's a 1982 maze video game developed by Atari under official license by Namco and an adaptation of the 1980 hit arcade game of the same name. And yes, the 1980 arcade game was a hit with me. The game was programmed by Todd Fry, taking six months to complete. Anticipating high sales, Atari produced over one million copies for its launch and held a National Pac-Man Day on April 3rd, 1982 to help promote its release. It stands as the best-selling Atari 2600 game of all time, selling more than 7 million copies. Despite its commercial success, Pac-Man was lambasted by critics for poor visuals and sound, and for bearing little resemblance to the original game. Hmm, we will see. It is often considered one of the worst video games ever made, and one of the worst arcade game ports released. Todd? I'm guessing you were under a ton of pressure, and I'm sure if you were here, you would tell me all the reasons why it's not my fault. I don't know. You can see here a picture of the front cover of the Pac-Man game, and I can tell you back in the day, I loved the Pac-Man arcade game. I played it all the time at the local Sela 7-Eleven. It was one of my favorite arcade games ever. And rumors were floating around, and there was no internet back then, so the rumors were passed by word of mouth between me and my friends. And the rumors were that Atari was working on a Pac-Man port for the 2600, and I could not wait. Did I have a 2600 myself? No. But my friends up the street did, and we were all talking about it, and they were going to get it, and the thought of being able to play Pac-Man at home where you didn't have to put quarters in was huge. Huge! Because 25 cents was the equivalent of a dollar today. So imagine putting a buck in to play one game of Pac-Man that would last two minutes, maybe. Now you can play for free. That was huge, huge. So we were all really excited. Pac-Man is here! It arrived. This hungry little fellow dashes around a maze, gobbling up dots, power pills, and ghosts, or points. Pac-Man is a real treat for the whole family. There are eight games, including special versions for young children. It's your job to keep Pac-Man as happy as possible. You must guide him around the maze so that he can eat video wafers and power pills. Protect him from the ghosts unless he has the super strength of a power pill. If he does have the super strength, help him chase the ghosts and gobble them up before they gobble him. I will say they did a pretty good job on the manuals back then that would come with the Atari 2600 purchases. It made sense because these games were not cheap. If I remember correctly, Pac-Man for the Atari was around 60 bucks. And 60 bucks today? That's over a hundred. It was a very, very expensive purchase. And also here we have the cartridge. So this is what the cartridge looked like that went into the 2600 console. And this is the front page of the main manual. And there's the table of contents. Here's Pac-Man, Life in Mazeland. This almost feels like it's going to be a whole book. Using your controllers and various other pages of helpful hints. Number one, here we go with the writing descriptive story. Here's Pac-Man. We know that millions of people all over the world just love the Pac-Man arcade game. Yes, I was one of those millions of people. Pac-Man has won the hearts of men, women, and children everywhere. We also know that Pac-Man has traditionally been an arcade game. Well, we know how to bring that same dynamite gameplay into your home. All right, that is a flat out lie. This gameplay was far from dynamite. I'm sorry. There's no one that can argue that with me. So right there, the selling marketing tools are kicking in utter failure is on the horizon. Our Pac-Man has all of the excitement and challenge of the standard arcade game, and you get to play in the comfort and convenience of your own home. This is especially advantageous if you still plan to make an occasional appearance at the arcade to show off your great playing skills. Little do they know that you've been practicing at home all along. Another flat out lie, this game is in no way going to improve your ability to play the arcade game. In no way. No way. It's so different from it that is impossible. So another flat out not true statement. But just in case you're new to Pac-Man, don't worry, it's easy to learn. You'll be a pro in no time at all. So positive, so motivating, so intended to make me feel good about getting ready to play this great port to the Atari. So relax, get comfortable, and enjoy it in the privacy of your own home. We suggest that you read this instruction booklet thoroughly before beginning the gameplay. We know that you won't want to miss any important details about gameplay. You might even find it entertaining. I will say this is entertaining. I will give them that. Life in Mazeland. There's a nice happy drawing of Mr. Pac-Man. The object of the game is to keep Pac-Man happy and healthy in his home of Mazeland. 
Pac-Man starts the game with four lives, or turns. The longer he survives, the more points you score. You score a point for every video wafer that Pac-Man eats. I'm going to clue you in the word wafer. It's one of the first big strikes against this game. Let's go ahead and move on and find out what these video wafers are all about. Now, from their Pac-Man arcade game, he eats dots. And that's what I was expecting. And now they're talking about wafers. I remember when my friends got this, I was looking at this manual thinking, wafers? Wafers? What are we talking about? It's supposed to be dots. Well, wafers are the dotted lines on the screen. You maneuver Pac-Man around the playfield over the video wafers. He automatically eats the video wafers, and they disappear from the maze. You score one point for each video wafer he eats. To score a point, Pac-Man must pass directly over the video wafer. That is just a mouthful. I'm trying to accentuate that point. Why were they not dots? Todd, tell me, why were they not dots? I know you could put dots on a screen, even if it was that old of a system. Next, we have the power pills. These are supposed to be called energizers. That's what they were from the arcade game. Why are they calling them power pills? I think they had some idea to make it sound like things you'd really eat in life or something like that. Another failure. Probably not Todd. Someone else told Todd this is what it is. But what are power pills? They are located in the four corners of the playfield. Each power pill is worth five points. When Pac-Man eats a power pill, the ghosts become a transparent blue color. And now we have a artist rendition of very, very scared blue ghosts. Did they look exactly like that in the game? We will see. So during this time, Pac-Man has the super strength to overcome the ghosts. This is his big chance to chase and gobble down each ghost. Unfortunately, this great power only lasts a few seconds. When the power starts wearing off, the ghosts turn pink and then back to yellow. Musical notes stop several seconds before ghosts turn back. That's there to help me out. Next, we have vitamins. Okay, in the original Pac-Man arcade game, they had fruits. They had cherry, strawberry, peach, apple, lime. It went on and on. Apparently now it's going to be a vitamin. So I'm not going to see a rendition of a cherry. I'm just going to see a block. And you will see. Vitamins are the two intersecting rectangles in the center of the playfield. They only appear for a few moments and then disappear and reappear. The vitamins are worth 100 points each time Pac-Man eats them. The Ghost Quartet. That's a new one. I don't remember singing ghosts in the original Pac-Man arcade game. I know they're trying to get a little creative here. But at this point, they're starting to lose me with the wafers and the vitamins and the power pills. But let's talk about the ghosts. And I am spending more time reading this manual because the gameplay, folks, is going to be really quick. The ghosts are the quartet of bad guys chasing Pac-Man around the maze. If a ghost eats Pac-Man, you'll lose a turn, one life. On the other hand, if Pac-Man eats a ghost, you score points. Pac-Man can only eat ghosts after eating a power pill. Then he can run around the maze eating ghosts. The first ghost is worth 20, 40, 160. It doubles. Somewhat like the arcade game. After Pac-Man eats a ghost, you'll only see eyes left on the ghost, but the ghosts are reincarnated by returning to the big square chamber in the center of the playfield. And there's a picture of the controller. I'm going to be playing this with a joystick system just connected to my PC emulator. And this is further talking about how to work with the joystick a little bit more on escape routes and letting you know the ghost can use the escape routes. That's all the same as the game. And there's a nice artist drawing of four ghosts looking at Pac-Man coming in through one of the escape routes. And a little bit more on console controls. One interesting thing about the 2600, it had two switches on it and you would dial in various types of games. This game had different types of settings where there were some that were easier for children, where the ghosts moved a little slower and some that were more difficulty so you could challenge yourself. So that and that and that. And here it is, folks. I know you've been waiting with bated breath to see what this game is all about. And I am going to just get right into the action. I have to cycle through the game settings to get back to the first game right there. It was single player, one player game. And are you ready? Let's have a drum roll, please. Three, two, one. I intentionally stopped talking for a minute so you could listen to those great sounds. And I am eating wafers and power pills and ghosts. I remember when I saw this at my friend's house, right away, I had the Pac-Man arcade game in mind. And there's this woo 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 sound that goes along when you play it. Well, that's not there. And when he eats the dots, it's waka 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 waka. I mean, that sound has been mimicked and all kinds of things. And here we have a prank, 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 prank. Another bad thing. I remember thinking this maze is not at all shaped like the maze from the arcade. It's different. And it was just another thing that made me feel like this was not Pac-Man at all. The flickering ghosts. 
it was weird how they flickered. It was bizarre. It didn't make sense. And the way he dies. The way he dies, the sounds in the arcade game are ear, womp, womp. And in this one, it's another thing. Everything about this game, I remember so vividly at my friend's house. Just all the excitement I had just dwindled. And I was left with just trying to play this at their place and try to have some kind of fun. And it just wasn't there. And that was the end of my game. I'll play one more just to show you one last time why this is considered the worst video game port of all time. It's funny, I went to the same spot as last time and died just the same. I should have learned from that mistake, shouldn't I? But, so here I am eating my wafers, working my way through the escape routes, and on the original Pac-Man arcade, they're on the sides. Here, they're on the top and bottom. And I know this was designed for a 4x3 television set, and the original Pac-Man was vertical. But I think they could have done a lot more to make this like the original. I don't quite understand why this was so different. There was that special prize in the center that came and went. And there are the flickering ghosts, the whole sounds. I know it wasn't going to be like the arcade Pac-Man, but it wasn't even close. They talk about bringing that experience home. This was not bringing the experience home at all. This was some other experience, I guess you could call it. Not a good one by any means. And it is fascinating that it made a ton of money for the company, but everybody was really disappointed. There's another show I did on Pac-Man that I called Heart Attack Pac-Man. I'm going to put a link to that right up there. And that is a modern day version of Pac-Man. So we can go from this old, old school bad port to a very modern version of Pac-Man. And you can see where Pac-Man started and where Pac-Man has gone to. I'm just gonna try to, I had to do that. At least I cleared the level. Follow me over to that show and have a heart attack with me playing a different kind of Pac-Man.